Hi, welcome back. I'm Manuel and this is the second video of our Athena project. In the first video we had a look at the general idea behind the project and behind Athena. We also saw that we need to connect Athena to S3 to be able to query our data. So in this video it's time to understand what S3 actually is. So here I am on aws.amazon.com now. And before we start, let me make one important note. Because if you never worked with AWS before, then you should check out Maximilian's video. Because in this video, he explains everything about AWS, so what AWS is and how to create an account. And you will need an account to work with S3 and with Athena. As soon as you got your account, you also need to make sure that you have the necessary rights to work in S3, so to upload data for example. This is all related to the IAM, the Identity and Access Management in AWS. Now if you never heard about that, this is also not a problem, because Max also has an awesome video where he explains to you what IAM means and how you can set it up correctly. Now as soon as you got these two things, so your account and your IAM set up correctly, well then you can start working on S3 and with that we can start with our video right now. So back to aws.amazon.com and well if you go to products right here, then you can find Amazon S3 right here. So Amazon Simple Storage Service. This is the service we want to talk about. So if you click onto that, then you can find a lot of interesting information about S3 right here. You can of course read through that if you want to, but the important thing for our project is that S3 is simply a cloud storage. This means we will upload our source files to S3 and then connect Athena to S3, well and by that to our source files. Now as I said you can read through that if you want to, but there is one important thing that we should take a look at together right now. And this important thing is related to the pricing, which you can find right here. And right here, you can find all the pricing details related to S3. So if you scroll down a little bit, right here for example, you can find the different pricing for the different regions and the different storage classes. We will talk about these storage classes throughout this video. Additionally, if you are a new user or new AWS user, then you even get 5 gigabytes of standard S3 storage for free as part of that free usage tier. Make sure to check out the details about that by clicking right here. Now these are the pricing details and there is one important information left maybe. For our project, the total storage that we need will amount to around about 50 megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes. That's maybe also quite important for you, because if you take a look at the storage prices right here, you can see that 50 megabytes is quite small actually. So that's the pricing of S3. But I think now it's time to take a look at S3, right? To do this, we can simply go to sign in to the console right here. And now simply type S3 right here in our console and select it right there. And here we can see that in my account there is already some information in it. If you use it the first time, this is probably empty. And this brings us to the first important step that we have to do in S3. Because to save data in S3, we need to create a bucket. A bucket is simply, well, you can imagine it as a folder or as a container where you can store your data to in S3. You can see all these different buckets right here that are already in this S3 account. But in our case, we should create a new bucket. To do this, we simply go to create bucket right here. And now we see that this menu opens. And the first thing we should do is we should create a bucket name. The important thing is that a bucket name is globally unique. This means if you try to name the bucket the same way I do it right here, this won't work. So I will use a name maybe YouTube Project Athena for example, like that. So you do the same, but not with the same name. And after we got our bucket name, we can select a region right here. If you click right here. This simply defines the location or the region where your data is saved to. Now generally you are free regarding the region that you select, but we want to work with Athena later on and after that with QuickSight. And the logic is that the region of QuickSight and of Athena has to be the same, otherwise well, we cannot connect our data. 
Additionally, if you want to work with encrypted data, which is something that we won't do right here, but something you could do in Athena, then you also need to make sure that the region that you select in Athena is the same as the one that you select for the bucket in S3 right here. And because of that, I will select the region down here, US East, North Virginia, for my S3 bucket. Maybe you do the same thing because then we can make sure that we can apply the same steps together. So we have our region right now. Right here you could define if you want to copy some settings from an existing bucket, which is something that we won't do right now. So we can click onto next right here. And if you scroll up a little bit, then you can see that you can define versioning, logging and tags. Well, we will not talk about these details right now. The only thing you need to know is that versioning, well, as the name says actually right here, helps you to keep multiple versions of your S3 data in that bucket. The logging allows you to create some log files to see how many accesses you had to your bucket, and the tags are a good help if you want to monitor your cost, for example. Now, as I said, we won't talk about these details right now because we don't need them for our Fino project, so we can simply click onto next right here. Right here, you can now specify permissions. This simply means you can define if other AWS accounts, for example, have access to your bucket and what this access should look like. We will talk about the details regarding that after we created that bucket. The important information right now is that if you don't change anything right here, AWS automatically sets the highest possible security settings. This means no other account can access your bucket at this stage if you keep it like that. So this means for us that we can now press next right here. And here we can find a summary of the settings that we made. And if you now click on to create bucket down here, well, if we then scroll down, or in your case it's the only bucket probably, then you can find our YouTube project Athena bucket, or the bucket named according to your naming of course, right here. Now if we click onto that bucket name now, right here, then you can see, well, our bucket is of course empty at the moment. We will change that quite soon. But as I said, I would like to take a close look at the permissions before we continue. That was the menu we just had a look at a few seconds ago. So to find the permissions, you simply go to, well, permissions right here. And then you can see two options or two options that I would like to cover right now. The access control list and the bucket policy. Right now I am in the access control list and if you scroll down a little bit, then you can see that you have three different options right here. The first option is the option to add a user. At the moment, the only user is our account, so this account I'm working right now, so this is the user of course, but you could add more users right here. The important thing is that more users right here refers to other AWS accounts. So if you have another account that you want to add right here, then simply do this. But then of course, you have to be careful about the object access right here and about the permissions access because you can specify how this new user can interact with your bucket. This means maybe he can only read the information or he can also change the information right here. And you also have to make sure that the permission access is set correctly. This means can this new account see the permissions you made? So permissions mean what are other users allowed to do in this bucket or can he even change their permissions? So this is something you really have to be careful about. But the good thing is that you can set everything in detail right here with that option. So this is the manage users option, an option that allows you to specify if a specific other AWS account can access the information in your bucket. But if you now take a look at the manage public permissions option right here, then you can see that you can even enhance that. Because if you click onto any authenticated AWS user, then well, each person or each AWS account can access your bucket. You can even increase that. You can even set that to everyone. So basically everyone can access your AWS S3 bucket. So as you can see, it's really important to make sure that the permissions are set correctly. But again, if you don't change anything, then you are the only one or your account is the only account that can access and change the information in your bucket. The last option is related to the system permissions. This simply means that if you have another service that basically runs your website for example in AWS and the service wants to create log files, well you could save these log files in S3 and to do this you need to set this log delivery to enabled because otherwise this new service is not allowed to save data in S3. So that's one option to manage the permissions in S3, the access control list.
But if you want to specify that even more, you can take a look at the bucket policy right here. Now you might wonder, well, what should I do right here? Well, the great thing is that if you scroll down, you can find a detailed documentation right here. So if you click onto that, then you see, well, what can you do with the bucket policy? How can you set them? And you also get some examples to make sure that you set the bucket policies the way you want them to be set. Now, I will not dive into the details about that right now, because for our Fino project, we don't need that. I only wanted to make sure that you know that you can set the permissions and the bucket policy really, really detailed in AWS. However, we can close this tab right now and scroll up a little bit and now go back to our S3 bucket right here in objects. Because we still have this bucket, but we don't have any information in it. And to upload files to S3, you have two options now. The first option would be the upload button right here. If you click onto that, then you can simply add our files and it will be loaded into that bucket. This is one option and this is totally fine. But as this project is about Athena, we cannot do it like this. Because Athena cannot access the bucket. Athena needs folders inside a bucket to be able to, well, access the data in it. This means we should close that upload option right here and now press create folder right there. Well, and as you can see, you can now simply name the folder. Let's maybe call it file one and two because this first folder will include two files. And now we can press save right here. Well, and now we got that folder created. And if you click onto it right here, then you can see that you don't have any objects in that folder. Well, so now is actually the time to finally upload our first source file into that folder. And to do this, you simply press upload right here. And now you can either drag or drop the files or you press add files right there. And then you can simply select the first file right there. You can find the link to all these files down there in the description of this video. So we have to select this first file, the population country 1950 to 1999. And we can also select the second file by pressing and holding shift. Now we got these two files and by pressing open right here, then we can see that these files are now well ready to be uploaded into our folder. So if you click on to upload right there and wait a few seconds, then we see that our two files are now in our folder. So if we go back right now, we still have that folder, click on it and see the files. This is great, but for our project, we actually need three folders. So let's quickly go back right here now and press create folder and call this folder maybe file free. Oops, file free. Clean maybe because we will have two versions of this file free. You will see soon why. And press save. And create another folder named file free error because this file will include an error. This is also something we will take a look at later. So let's press save now and go to the file free clean folder. Press upload. Go to add files once again and now select this file, the population 2050 to 2100 without the error and press open and press upload again. Here we have our second file now. So let's go back once again to our bucket and open the file free error folder and press upload and add files and select the error file now, this one and press open and upload one last time. Now we also uploaded our last file to our folder and with that we can now go back to the bucket again and take a look at one last thing that I would like to show you in S3. Because we talked about the storage classes when we had a look at the pricing a few minutes ago. And at the moment everything or every file we uploaded is saved or stored in the standard storage class. How can I see that? Well, if you simply click onto the folder for example right here then you can see the storage class right there. Now it could be that you want to change that storage class because we have three different storage classes in S3. You can take a look at these if you select a single file or let's better go back to the bucket and now select the whole folder. And if we now go to more right here, then we can see that change storage class option down there. If we click onto that, then we can see that we have three storage classes. Well, you can see two right here, yes, but if you scroll down, you see that you have this third one. Now, why do we have these three storage classes right here? 
Well, this is simply due to the fact that AWS offers these classes depending on, well, how frequent and how fast you need to be able to access this data. So if you have data like we have that we want to upload and access instantly, then the standard storage class is the one that we should use. So what about the second class, the standard IA class? Well, this is simply meant for infrequently accessed data. This simply means data that you want to store and you want to make sure that this information will not get lost, but you don't want to access this data quite frequently. That's the difference to the first class, to the standard class, which you want to store and which you want to access quite frequently. So that's the second class, but there is a third class also, this reduced redundancy class. Well, this is actually only meant for data that you basically only want to store. And there is an important difference when you compare it to the first two classes. And to see that difference, it makes sense to take a look at the official documentation. You can find the link to this documentation, of course, down there in the video description. However, if we scroll down right here, then we can find the three different storage classes. Well, actually we have four, but we'll talk about Glacier in a few seconds. So if you look at the first two storage classes, so standard and standard IA, you can see that the durability is really, really high. This is also true for RRS, so the third storage class, but you can see that the durability is less than what we see for the first two classes right here. And that's the important difference. With the RRS class, the probability that information might get lost is still low, but is higher than compared to the standard and the standard IA class. As I said, if you want to find more about the different classes and about what class fits your needs the most, just take a look at this documentation. But still there is this Glacier class right here. Well, to be honest, this Glacier class is not supported by Athena. Therefore, we will not focus on to that right now. But if you want to know more about Glacier, you can simply scroll up a little bit right here into this section. And here you can find a lot of information about Glacier and how to use that storage class. So with that, we now understood the different storage classes and can close that actually. And we also have our free folders with the files in here. So this means we can now actually start working in Athena. This is true, I only want to explain you some more things before we do that in the next video. Because to make sure that we can access data stored in S3 using Athena, we have to meet some prerequisites actually. One of these prerequisites is of course the setting of the right permissions. This means we have to be able to work in S3 to create buckets and folders and to upload data for example. This is something related to the IAM, the Identity and Access Management. We talked about that before and as I said, take a look at Max video to make sure that the settings are set well correctly. Another important thing is the regions. We also talked about that. If you don't have encrypted data, then the region between Athena and S3 can be different. But as I said, in this case and in this project actually, we simply set the region between S3, Athena and later on QuickSight to the same region, just to make things more easy for us. And the last thing is related to the storage class, so the topic we just talked about. Because to use S3 and Athena in combination, you need to make sure two things. The first thing is that all folders in your S3 bucket must have the same storage class. We talked about these different classes. Additionally, the Glacier storage class is not supported by Athena. But that's it actually. With that, we now have a basic understanding of S3. We created three different folders and we uploaded our source files to these folders. And with that, we are now ready to start working with Athena. So let's take a look at what Athena is and how we can query these data we just uploaded to S3 with Athena in the next video of this project. So hope to see you there. Bye bye.